Hello my dear friends, welcome to Top Scholars. Today we will be discussing about extracting metals at the top of the activity series. So now friends, what do we mean by highly reactive metals? We know about the reactivity series, right? The metals which are placed at the top of the reactivity series, they are said to be highly reactive, right? Because reactivity series is simply the arrangement of metals in an increasing or decreasing order of their reactivity. So the metals which are placed at the top of the activity series are said to be highly reactive. This is because these metals, they have a very large tendency to lose electrons and thereby result in the formation of cations, right? So these highly reactive metals, they have a very large tendency to lose the electrons that are present in their valence shell resulting in the formation of cations. For example, these reactive metals, they react very vigorously with dilute acid resulting in the liberation of hydrogen gas. Also friends, if we talk about these highly reactive metals, they react with oxygen at room temperature and thereby these metals need to be extracted by electrolytic reduction. For example, highly reactive metals such as sodium, calcium, magnesium can be extracted by carrying out the electrolysis of their molten chloride salts. That is, sodium metal can be obtained by carrying out the electrolysis of molten sodium chloride. Calcium can be obtained from calcium chloride. Similarly, magnesium can be obtained from magnesium chloride. So, during electrolysis, what happens is, the metal gets deposited at the cathode, whereas chlorine gas gets liberated at the anode. For example, let's consider the electrolysis of molten sodium chloride. So, what happens is, at the cathode, sodium metal gets deposited, right? So, over here you can see at the cathode, there is gain of electrons, right? Now, since there is gain of electrons, we can say that at the cathode, there is reduction which takes place. Whereas, at the anode, what happens is, the chloride ions, they lose electrons, right? So, loss of electron is called as oxidation, exactly. So, at the anode, oxidation takes place. So, as you can see over here, at the cathode, we have sodium metal which gets deposited. Whereas, at the anode, we have chlorine gas which is liberated. Now friends, today we will be discussing about how do we extract highly reactive metal aluminium. Now friends, if we talk about aluminium, its atomic number is 13. So, its electronic configuration is 2,8,3 which means that how many electrons are present in the valence shell? 3 electrons. So, the valency of aluminium becomes 3, exactly. Now friends, since aluminium is placed at the top of the reactivity series, it is a highly reactive metal. And thereby, aluminium does not occur in nature in the free state. It occurs in the combined form. After oxygen and silicon, aluminium is the third highly abundant element which is found in the earth's crust. In the earth's crust, aluminium is found in the form of bauxite. That is aluminium oxide dot XH2O. X stands for the number of water molecules. So, in the earth's crust, aluminium is found in the form of bauxite which is an ore of aluminium. So, aluminium can be extracted from its ore that is bauxite, right? Now, friends, Bauxite not only contains aluminium, but it also contains certain impurities. These impurities are called as gang. Now, the percentage of aluminium oxide that is present in bauxite is about 30 to 70 percent, whereas the remaining part is made up of impurities that is gang. These impurities can be of sand, silica, iron oxide as well as titanium dioxide. So, friends, what we are going to discuss today is how can we actually extract aluminium from its ore that is bauxite. And as we discussed, bauxite ore it contains about 30 to 70 percent of aluminium oxide whereas the remaining part is made up of gang. And what is gang? Gang is simply the impurities. 
These impurities can be of sand, silica, iron oxide and titanium dioxide. To learn more about this topic, download Top Scholars app.